Thank you all for being here. I'm sure we'll take a minute and go around and, you know, and just um, do some little deeper introductions. But um, this is a really, you know how in life things just the right things come to you at the right moments. And th th this is one of those where, um, you know, you weren't looking for something, but happened into an extraordinary opportunity um, to really help nurses. And um, this is my, um, this is a passion of mine. I've been, you know, um, working in the world of technology and nursing. I'm actually an ICU old trauma nurse myself. So, um, so we do um, have some things in common here, um, but um, um, have spent the last about 30 years on the technology side of healthcare and have been giving a lot of deep thought for the last uh, half a decade on how we can be more helpful to nurses and um, have spent a lot of time on that topic. And then I met Dan um, and, um, and Brad and this extraordinary team and Craig, who's not here right now, um, couldn't join us today, but Craig and I have worked in the film industry for quite some time. I'm also a filmmaker and um, and um, we ran into this kind of method and process that Dan and his team have been working on and building software around. And the minute I saw it, I said, oh, we need this. <laughs> what can we do? Um, and how can we um, kind of reimagine this in a way that would actually work for nurses? And so that's really what this, this team here um, is working on is kind of designing, prototyping, and imagining um, how we might be able to bring this really, I believe, valuable tool into the hands of nurses, whether they are at work, at home, wherever they might be, um, and have the opportunity to reset, to find a way to sort of reset with themselves. And that can be something as simple as, you know, very short meditation or a very short visualization or, you know, a, a laughter session, you know, whatever that might be. But it could also go deeper. And when I experienced what um, this team calls journeys, and I don't know what we might call it in healthcare, but um, I saw an opportunity to really allow people to engage and actually not just have an individual experience, but actually have a community experience where they can actually think about, process, discuss whatever's on their mind. Okay, and I and and in a safe environment, um, um, and in a way that helps them to process um, things so that they keep moving. I think everyone on this call understands energy and we don't want stuck energy, right? We don't want, we don't want our energy stuck in, in grief or in hard things or in, tra in traumatizing events. We want that stuff to move through us in a healthy way um, and become part of us in a healthy way because I don't think it ever goes away, but um, that's what I think the opportunity here is. And we're just really excited to get a group together um, to kind of talk about it a little more, share the experience a little bit and get some thoughts around what you guys think. And, um, and we don't want you to be shy. And actually I'm an old ICU nurse, we're not shy. So, um, so I know that, um, I know that, you know, we'll feel free to just really talk and, you know, we'd like to know, um, what the experience is like for you. Do you think other nurses it would be helpful to? We have some ideas on how to kind of package this and get it out very quickly because there's a lot going on right now. Um, and a lot of people looking for help and a lot of people trying to answer that, but maybe not nurse, you know, maybe not as nursing focused as it needs to be. So this is like 100% nurse focused. It's not focused for anybody else. Um, and I think that that's really needed really, you know, um, so we're not trying to translate from somebody who doesn't actually understand. So 
Um, Dan um, and both Brad, I welcome you guys to add to that, to comment. Uh, we can't hear you. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. I think that's a great uh, context setting. But let's first go around and let everybody tell us a little more about themselves and, and there's you know, just a bit of their background and story so we understand. And, I'll do, and Brad and I will do the same too. So wh who wants to start? Remember she said, don't be shy. I'll go first. <laughs> Just set the tone here, you guys. So, so like I said, um, you know, my first job in nursing was an ICU. Um, I spent many years there and in trauma and then into management and then had the opportunity. Um, you know, I was right here by the Silicon Valley. I'm in California and um, had the opportunity to get involved in the very first um, electronic medical record technology. Um, this was in the DOS days. So, yes, I'm old. Um, and so we, some of you on here won't even know what DOS is, but that's okay. Uh, it was ugly and hard to use. <laughs> and we brought the first graphical user interface um, electronic medical record to market. It's now um, all embedded in Cerner's offering. Um, um, people, a lot of people also know Epic, which uh, at, at, in our days there, we actually competed and beat Epic at many things, <laughs> including Kaiser you know, big deals. So um, once I was in technology, I really began to focus on the workforce and um, going really deeply into the health and well-being of our workforce. Um, and so have been on, I think, six startup companies, um, you know, bringing different solutions to that, including we brought the first to, the first to market um, self-scheduling for nurses so nurses could take more control over their schedule. So I've done things like that. Also, I'm a filmmaker. I, um, I um, made a film called Nurses If Florence Could See Us Now, um, which uh, continues to do really well. And a lot of nursing schools use it to recruit nurses. But it was a, uh, an opportunity to travel around the whole country and talk to nurses and capture their stories. Um, so yeah, lots of different kinds of projects. But I'm really delighted to be here working on something I care very deeply about. I'll go next. Uh, my name's Lauren Khalifa. I'm the holistic nurse for St. Joseph's Healthcare System in New, uh, Patterson, New Jersey. Um, I'm a nurse for 40 years this year. And uh, I started out in critical care, well, step down unit mostly, cardiac step down. I did 13 years of nights while my children were small and uh, did med surge and went back to telemetry. I had office jobs in between doing, um, you know, chart review, walking into the patient's room with denial letters. I didn't like that very much. <laughs> oh, um, and yeah. was very sick about 12 years ago. I was in ICU myself for a six month period of surgeries and 12 days in ICU. And my life changed there. My nursing direction changed. No longer could do bedside. That's where my heart was. Uh, I love Jean Watson's theory, and mm. I saw she, I ordered your book, it looks Aww. good, and uh, um, so anyway, I, through that journey of moving past the bedside, I became the patient safety coordinator for critical care, and had to go back to school. And when I went back to school, I was like so surprised that they had holistic nursing as one of the courses, then surprised that it wasn't really holistic nursing. It was caring for the whole person. But that's where I learned pranic healing. It's a no touch energy modality. And I did, um, I did therapeutic touch. I learned that the first time around and used it secretly behind closed doors and curtains. And this time I knew nurses needed to be healed, you know, as you age, as you, I was 23 and I herniated two of my discs carrying a pa uh, catching a patient. So I know no matter what age a nurse is, you usually have some pain. So I started healing out in the open because nurses, I learned a very good lesson. Nurses don't stop. They don't like to stop. They'll, they'll keep going with a back pain of eight saying, no, I don't have time for you to heal me. So I started healing them right at, at their med cart. And then, then I became, years later, the holistic nurse. And then the pandemic came. 
six years later. Never thought I would ever see anything. And I didn't see anything compared to Kara and to Kathleen and I'm sure the other nurse that's here, I forgot her name so far. And um, I did a study that's very unlike me to go for, I'm resistant to studies and computers through the years, but learned to do both. Uh, because I was feeling so overwhelmed myself and seeing the nurses, talking to the nurses and finding that um, there might be PTSD, depression. And we, we did prove that there was PT, PTSD, depression and anxiety, not so much stress or lack of sleep, but um, not enough for scientific uh, significance mm -hmm. anyway. And been trying to put together programs uh, for the nurses, but it's slow going. It's like red it, tape. Has your study been published? Not yet. We're working on it. Uh huh. We're working on it. Uh huh. And um, it needs to be. I used to um, sit on the on the editorial board of um, Nursing Economics. Uh -huh. um, I stepped down because I was just too busy. But um, but I I have some. If you need some help connecting people for that study to get published, oh. I'm happy to talk with you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's a very important, we had 1,208 uh, participants, not all nursing, 898 were nurses. Yeah. Uh, we did the whole hospital, but anyway, wow. um, trying to find a solution. Email's not kind of working for communication. Um, and I started what I call the healing corner. And again, communication is not, um, not well, provided yet and they're working on an app at work supposedly that will link all the um everything that's available to nurses but so far it hasn't come to fruition so i'm very interested in this because if you could you know have something on your phone specific for nurses like short meditation yeah. um maybe just as simple as and you probably can download it but like the singing bowl where right. just the sound to remind you to be present. Um, I love that you have your bowl right there. Me too. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but anyway, and, you know, or even um, how to set up an, a holistic environment, yeah. you know, a, a, an escape for yourself. Right. So that's Beautiful. Lauren, thank you so much. And uh, you know if there's any preliminary results or version of that study, oh. I'd love to see it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to see it and support you to get it out too. Thank who's, you. Who's next? I can go. Okay. <laughs> so my name's Heather. I'm a nurse in New Jersey. I currently work at University Hospital, which is uh, the level one trauma center. Um, I am currently the um, assistant director of nursing for critical care. Um, prior to that, I was an ER nurse for about eight years. Um, and uh, luckily, I... Unluckily, but luckily, I actually started going to therapy right before COVID. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Good timing. I think the spirits were telling me something. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, as a nurse, it's, it's just hard. You know, I've, I've kind of bounced in and out of therapy all my life. And it's really hard for, I think, our personality types to take the time to care for ourselves. Um, so I would always start and then stop and then start and then stop. Um, and at this time, uh, it was helpful that everything went to telemedicine. So it was a little bit easier to continue, but I actually really, you know, got into spirituality and, um, like Buddhism and Hinduism and started reading a lot about, um, you know, the ego and the id and all that stuff and really, um, have found meditation and mindfulness, um, this past year, which has really changed my life. Um, so I'm grateful for that. Um, and I, you know, one of those people that has like you know, four or five different meditation apps on my phone. So I'm excited to um, be able to be a part of something like this because I know for my staff, and at one point I was a, a nurse educator and I ran the residency program, which is basically a program for new graduate nurses coming into the hospital. Um, you know, they don't take the time to care for themselves and there's such a missing gap between you know, going to school and then entering the workforce. They're not prepared mm -hmm. to enter the workforce and they have no coping skills whatsoever. Um, so 
the biggest thing that we found with the residency program was just the ability for them to debrief. They loved that. They didn't care who was coming to talk to them that day about what subject. It was just that initial hour to debrief where we got to go around the room and talk about, you know, preceptor issues, staff mm -hmm. issues, personal issues. You know, it was everything from, you know, my patient threw something at me to I need car insurance, like what car insurance? You know, it's a little bit of a, little, a mixed bag of potpourri. Um, you know, it was just, it helped for them to be able to have that sounding board. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to, to be a part of this because it's definitely needed. Well, that's great. Kara, you're up. Okay, <laughs> I was just gonna go. I'm go um, I also worked in um, the ER before with Kathleen and Heather before and in St. Joseph's with Lauren. Um, and now I'm in employee health, um, but for like a month, so it's not that long. <laughs> um, but I've um, certified as a yoga teacher as well from last year. My yoga teacher training went from in-person to virtual when the world kind of shut down and we finished with that. Then um, in the summer of last year, I also found a holistic nursing program through UConn, which I'm still in now. And I actually just got off a call with our director, um, Colleen Delaney, who was, I think the like, holistic nurse of the year last year so it's been like amazing to learn from her to learn from Lauren who I've been in contact with like throughout my schooling and everything and um yeah this is like so in line with like what we I think as a collective need and I've always wanted I always thought for myself that I wanted to be like the nurse's nurse which is where I went from like ER to like employee health although it's like very different from being like a holistic nurse in that sort of sense and kind of providing that kind of care because exactly what Heather said is like we don't have that balance like we're such we're so busy being the supporters that we're not good at supporting being supported or supporting ourselves and finding kind of that work-life balance and we are hard pressed to like care give and not like care receive um so I'm very excited that Kathleen like told me about this project and like um the fact that it's going to be something so accessible as an app is so important because I think it's just access. And now that like the world has gone more virtual than it already was, like, I think that there's like, that's a huge barrier for nurses too. I feel like have told coworkers like a million times over, like come to yoga, let's do yoga, let's do something like, but like, they're like, no, I can't, I'm too busy. I don't have the time. So like things like making it ex like ready for them when they need it or when they want it, or like I've looked up, things for like 12 hour shifts, how to meditate after 12 hour shifts or before a 12 hour shift. Like our <clears throat> nurses roles are so specific that like it's hard to relate or like a lot of yoga is like how to stretch after sitting for eight hours. I'm like, we don't sit for 12 hours. <laughs> opposite of like what the rest, like some other job roles and things need. So like, I do think it's really necessary to have like this focused population. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you. Last but not least, so I'm Kathleen Robinson, and I've mm -hmm. talked to to uh, I just have we have I've talked to Dan and to Kathy, and uh, so we the four of us have all worked together. Lauren and I a little bit more um, virtually. Like we never we've sort of discovered each other right when I was leaving St. Joe's, which is unfortunate. Uh, but Heather and I have worked very closely together for ever since I met her at St. Joe's, and Kara too. I I feel like I've seen Kara grow up actually. So uh, yeah, because you started as an extern with me and then a nurse and yeah. Uh, so I've been a nurse for 29 years and I would say probably 25, 26 of them were, have been in emergency um, prior to that ICU and, and uh, tally. So really hardcore ICU to begin. I, I realized that Emerge was way, way too much fun. Um, my subspecialty is trauma. I'm technically a clinical nurse specialist in trauma, but I um, have been working as a uh, an educator, a nursing educator in emergency for the past 10 years. Um, but I've dabbled, I taught, in, I taught in academics at Boston College. I've, you know, worked as a CNS in trauma for seven, eight years. I've been an educator for 10 now. And just about um, two weeks ago, I transitioned to a new role now where I am, um, my title sounds very fancy, but I, I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm a director of nursing for the emergency nursing, director of nursing for the emergency services line, and I'm a director of operations. So I have 11 emergency, 11 emergency departments, and um, I'm going to be working with all of the nurses within those departments, um, and uh, 
the role is still to be defined, but um, I think I will end up being kind of the, finally, they're going to have a nurse at the table. It sounds like this healthcare system did not have a nurse anywhere in their organogram. And I looked at it, I'm like, where's the nurse, where's the nurse in your organogram? And she's like, oh, that's, that's why you're here. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Um, I, uh, I'm very interested, like Kara says, to be that nurse's nurse. I've been um, a mentor. I, I really, really believe in reflective practice, like uh, Heather was talking about. Reflective practice is something I've done very, very purposefully with my the nurses I've worked with for a long, long time. And it's something that I actually was mentored in as a clinical nurse specialist probably 18 years ago. It's just a really excellent practice in terms of emotional health and wellness, but also in terms of a learning tool. It's very good. And I, I really believe in reflective practice. Um, I also am a recent uh, meditator. Um, I, uh, my husband's very involved in um, an organization with meditation and he'd been bugging me for years saying this would be really good for you. And I was, I was like, no, I don't need this. Um, and then finally did a really good um, meditation course for healthcare professionals in the fall. And it's been excellent. Um, I think it just showed me a new avenue for taking care of myself. I'm not very good. Nurses don't take, we don't take care of ourselves at all. We'll run around a million miles an hour and we'll forget to go to the doctor for like five years. And, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you're with doctors every Every day of your life, you know. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> never <gonna> <laughs> exactly. And you know too much. <laughs> yeah, or just or, or like I'm fine. I should be fine. You know. So in any case, um, I found that uh, um, the meditation techniques that they're very basic, but they are are very good for me. And um, been trying to be disciplined in my practice of this because I do find in the days where I don't take time for my own personal emotional wellness, um, that it, the day is just not quite as smooth as it could be. And I, it's not tangible, but I feel it. Um, COVID was a disaster for all four of us uh, here, no, no question. We all experienced it in different ways. Um, but I think that uh, there's post-traumatic stress in all of nursing right now. All of us have post-traumatic mm -hmm. stress, there's no question. Um, and I have also been through therapy post COVID uh, because I felt it was necessary and have really encouraged other people to do so as well. So I think that anything we can do to help our nurses right now is just incredibly important. Um, I feel it's a privilege in my, my new role that I will be able to work with hundreds of nurses. And my hope is that something like this would be something that I could bring to the table um, as a representative of the nurses of my system. So um, I'm really, it's amazing how things, uh, how, how, like you're saying, Kathy, how things fall in your path. And uh, so- Isn't it? Here's the path. <laughs> it's cool. I know. And, I, you know, I just have, I, I just want to say thank you for bringing this group together because well, I'm looking at these spaces and I'm listening to your stories. And I'm like, it, it, you know, it, in all my years of startups, you can tell when you're on the right path because mm. things open up and people like this show up and, and, you know, and things just kind of happen and you don't have to push hard at the doors, you know, they just kind of open. And um, I'm just looking at, at these videos and, yeah, I, and I just see a bunch of shining light. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, so thank you for bringing the group together. Nurses. We're so glad you're all here. Thank you. Yes, let me echo that, Kathy. Thank you, Kathleen, for uh, <clears throat> bringing your, uh, your friends here and your colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, so let me try and give you a little background about myself and then uh, about the project in Bradwell, too. Um, I've been um, studying and practicing and teaching meditation for over 30 years. Um, and But it was first started a few years before that because I started studying Aikido as a young man. I have my Aikido black belt. And if you know anything about Aikido, mm -hmm. it translates from the Japanese to the way of harmony. And yes, I can defend myself, but actually I was taught at a much more deeply spiritual level than that. Little did I really understand as a 19 year old kid, but I spent a decade studying with that. And it turned out my sensei was a student and just arrived back from Tokyo with the founder of Aikido, which if you understand these things, that means the transmission was very close. And I had no idea, it's just a young man <clears throat> standing for hours and a moment, a guy grabbed me by my wrist, half my size, same move, and I couldn't move anything, right? It was taking me to a different dimension, of course. And now I know that and teaching me to be able to see and feel life force, energy or ki or chi. And um, <clears throat> it took me a while to find a meditation practice that matched that, but it did. But I was always determined both for my Aikido and for my meditation, not to just do it on the dojo or on the meditation mat. That was never enough for me. I'm more practical than that. I wanted to bring it into my career and my life and any aspect I could. So I spent many years experimenting on how the heck do you do that? There's no 
manual on that. Um, and I've had a career uh, where I've been helping run universities and been vice president of a hospital for a decade, worked with hundreds of nurses. I have to tell you a funny story. So I really wanted to bring complementary medicine and alternative therapies into this large hospital I was working at uh, near Toronto. And of course, the doctors were totally resistant and didn't want anything to do with it. So I turned to the nurses in the nursing community. It took us three years, but we got it into the hospital. The nurses were all over it. They knew what the patients wanted. They knew what they wanted to, to see. And so now there's a whole, for decades now, uh, that whole thing. So I got to work not only with nurses in my administrative role, but also on that particular project. And I just, I wouldn't claim to know what your experience is, but I claim to have even higher respect than the rest of the population for nurses, because I saw it. You know, I had a 24 seven beeper on my belt. I would go in at midnight to try and help solve problems, et cetera, find beds for patients. So I saw what nurses actually do. I just, I can't, I can't thank you enough for every nurse that I've, uh, I've ever met. Against that backdrop, a bunch of years ago, um, I failed to retire, I tried twice to retire. <laughs> the universities and all that. And I just, I didn't understand the concept of people said, well, you know, you got a pension, you should retire. And I, I guess I could retire. I just absolutely failed miserably. At it so I was like, okay, now, now what? Um, and so I started a second career and I kind of segued into coaching before coaching was a thing. I've been a life coach and a leadership coach for 15 years now, all across America and around the world, actually. And I've loved it and it's fascinating. But several years ago, I got the call to help more people at more scale than you can do on coaching. Coaching is wonderful. Of course, by definition, it's one-on-one -on -one or maybe a small group. And um, as like, like life would happen, as you said, about this particular circumstance, just around that time, I said, you know, I don't know anything about technology. I'm a techno idiot. I know how to meditate. I know how to run organizations and businesses. But obviously, if I'm going to go and reach more people, I'm going to be online and now I'm really screwed because I don't know anything about it. So I meditated, which is always my fallback. Um, and I just said, hey, universe, my own sort of way, help me out here. I need to find some folks that are spiritual in their own way. It doesn't have to be my way, but highly technical. Literally three weeks later, a buddy of mine I hadn't talked to in 10 years, I lived in California for a while, called me out of the blue, just wanted to catch. I said, why did you call me? We caught up and he said, well, actually, I just had a feeling, Dan, because I really need something. I need a five minute meditation. I can do anytime, any place I am. I'm a CEO of a tech company. I have a family. I never get to yoga class. I never get to my meditation work. And it just really ruins me. And, and at first I said, five minutes. I teach for a weekend or a week and 20 minute sets. And five minutes can't be done and be impactful. He said, look, just do me a favor, meditate on it, which I did. And I got very clear guidance about how to to a guided meditation, which is what my meditation method is, in a way that I thought might be impactful. And it turned out to be very impactful for him and others as we brought them on. So we've now recorded over 400 guided meditations of a wide variety of topics, and they're all spontaneous because, frankly, they're channeled. They're just, my skill is to be available and let whatever comes through come through. And sometimes I pick a topic or a topic emerges for me or we curate a topic, which is what we're gonna do in a few minutes here, where I'm gonna ask you what's top of mind or on your hearts for you, and we'll see if there's a topic that emerges. Now, I have to be really honest about this. When we first started doing this, I thought it was kind of cute and kind of nice and maybe interesting, maybe a little bit helpful. But as I started to see, as we did more and more beta tests with individuals and then with groups, the impact, I was actually surprised and frankly, resistant. Well, it can't be that important. It's just helpful, right? It's my own issue, of course. Long story short, as we went on in this journey, we discovered not only were the meditations impactful, there are many meditations that are, but that with the sharing afterwards was important. Now, if you know anything about the history of meditation, you know that people for thousands of years have been meditating and very often together in different kinds of communities, right? And that and if you've had the experience of meditating in a group, it's actually easier Nobody ever really knows why, but it's easier for most of us. So I knew this, I've had that experience, I've taught groups, I know the ancient history of it, et cetera. And what we found was afterwards when we did the, I'll call it a debrief, let's call it a sharing, afterwards, it was amazing because people would still be in the afterglow, so to speak, of the transmission in a slightly meditative state. And so we simply asked them, how was that experience? How are you feeling? What happened for you? And they share. 
And what they do is they share very authentically and sometimes profoundly, depending on the moment and the experience for people. But they were really deeply connecting in a way that was not normal for them. So we've got this whole process now. We've created a minimum viable product, an app that is just a generic design that Kathy, of course, is, wants to build on, which is fantastic, um, which allows people to listen to recorded journeys together live and then debrief together live. And we're about to put all the science on this. We have a chief scientific officer. We've done some mood scores and soon we'll do some biometrics. We think, and we're of course working uh, <clears throat> potentially with Louis, with Kathleen's husband, about me measuring various biometrics, which I'm really excited about, Kathleen. That could be really helpful. But the point is this. It seems to be really helpful for people. And it seems to be meaningful for them. Sometimes deeply moving, sometimes just relaxation, sometimes just a break, right? So we know for sure it's, you know, it's, it's, it's lessening the stress and maybe even anxiety. And we'll find out more as we get into the science. We've been doing beta tests with families, um, adult families across the country, certainly during COVID, changing the family dynamic way beyond anything I imagined. We've been doing beta tests with businesses, changing the dynamic there. In, amongst partners and, and owners and businesses. So we've just been experimenting because we don't really know what we have here. It's like lightning in a bottle, like what is this? Now, of course, what's happened is what I call communities of need are emerging. Kathy came to us through a mutual friend. Someone's come to us from the Veterans Administration. Someone's come to us from the recovery community and probably next is mental health. And they're finding us. We don't, you know, we're not pushing this out. We're trying to figure out what we've got here and how can it help, right? Um, and, and let me be clear about something else. The little company we formed, which is California-based, is a social enterprise. It'll soon be a B Corp, if you know what that is. It's a corporation devoted to the higher good that puts a substantial amount of its profits into nonprofit work. Um, and so none of us, I selected as I built the startup, people that were already successful. They didn't have to have this thing and make a billion dollars on it. They were doing it because they wanted to do it. And yes, we want to make it financially sustainable and a reasonable business. But that's not why we're doing it. First is impact. Second is sustainability financially. So when Kathy came to us and um, through our mutual friend and started talking about nurses' needs, and she laid out a list that wasn't surprising, but was still hard to take in as a non-nurse. Really? That, 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 and that? And then she <laughs> sent me a 15-minute a um, uh, course or book I got, which was lovely. You're going to enjoy it. A 15-minute <clears throat> video about nurses' experience of death. And of course, you know, I had had some glimpses of that in my hospital career, but not directly. You're not at the bedside, right, most of the time. So I'm in this place now. I'm extremely grateful, Kathy, for you, for bringing mm -hmm. the real story and the real needs of nurses right to us, because it's a wonderful application for us. And, and it, it was only a week or two later that VA came to us, a guy connected to them, and then a week or two later recovery. So that's that moment that Kathy's talking about where stuff just starts to pop. And of course, you know, then the synchronicity of hearing about Kathleen and meeting her through her husband, and here we are. So I'm thrilled, I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm absolutely, consider me ignorant about the life of nurses, right? Mm -hmm. Consider me, I don't know, and I wanna know, and one of the first things Kathy said to me, she said, well, Dan, we have to change the brand and the tone and the colors and all the rest of that for nurses. <laughs> That's okay by me. I'm not evangelical about this. Okay. And we did that. I said it nicer than that. Well, <laughs> but I yeah, but I got, I, got, I got the point. You were testing and you were right to test. And so we have done that. And we'll show you some stuff on that. So, Brad, let me give you just a minute to talk about your background. Yeah, I'll be brief because I really want to get out of the way and allow the conversation that's uh, going to be had here to, to, to start. But uh, I was introduced to Dan about uh, maybe two years ago through uh, the CEO of the tech company that Dan was talking about. Uh, uh, he's a guy I've done some work with in the past. We're good friends. And uh, my background, I, I come out of a, you know, sort of a film school, Southern California, working in Hollywood, doing uh, media events, production work. Uh, but I was always doing it through my own company. So I, I, I have a lot of experience in startups and figuring out how to create something out of, you know, with nothing to start. So uh, uh, Dan and I connected. Uh, I, I currently serve as the chief operating officer for Wakuri Inc., which is our startup business. Uh, and I kind of handle uh, everything from, you know, media production event to just operations. And we're a small team. So we, we wear a lot of hats. 
Uh, but my, my, my role here is really just to facilitate uh, and, uh, you know, ultimately uh, to deliver, you know, when we, when we uh, mm -hmm. commit to uh, doing something. So without going, uh, without further ado, I'm going to, I'm just going to step out of the way and allow, uh, you know, the, the group here to talk. And I, but I just want to say, uh, finally, uh, I really just, I'm feeling, you know, the, like the energy of this group is so amazing. Like I'm really feeling this in my body right now, this conversation and where you're all coming from. And uh, I'll stop there. Thank you. Brad never does, but one day he will. He's also a shaman. Small detail. <laughs> okay, and he brings his shamanic dreaming into everything he does. So I love having him as a, as one of our partners. Um, what we wanted to do was do a journey with you. And it'll be spontaneous. And the topic is spontaneous. Um, and it will just take us five minutes. And then afterwards, we'll debrief. So you can have the experience of what the heck we're talking about, if that's agreeable to you all. And, in, and to do that, it, what we do when we're live like this is we try and curate a topic of shared interest. So I can always come up with a talk. Kathy probably already has a list of topics in her mind. We may use those. But let me ask a question to each of you and all of you. Right now, in this moment, with regard to self-care for nursing and what nurses could really benefit from on this, what's a topic that comes to your mind that is of interest to you? What kind of journey would you like to go on right now? And I would just like to highlight that it can be anything. I mean, quite literally in reality, it, it, there's, there's no oh, out of Just for fun, I've actually, done a journey, <laughs> I've actually done a journey to a slug. <laughs> I've done a journey to a galaxy. Yeah. Last night I did a journey to a leaf on the wind. Um, and before that I did a journey to healing a broken heart. So what's the phrase? I won't say Bob's your uncle, Bobby's your uncle, right? Whatever you want. I I don't the thing that came up uh, because the last couple of days I spent a lot of time in groups, different groups for nurses. And um death came up so many times yeah. so uh, that they're suffering from what they saw and uh, and even one of the ICU nurses was saying about how he still wakes up in the middle of the night from having to bring bodies to the makeshift morgue Whoa. and um, and it was repeated today and yesterday and no, as an example, how, sorry, Ellen. I thank you for that. As an example, how we might cure that right that or another topic is to me that would suggest a journey to the transformation of grief. As an example, so other ideas or topics or riffing off Lauren. Yes, I mean, I can, I can second Lauren that that's definitely a concern. I have a staff member in one of our critical care units who had to go on leave um, because he worked in one of a COVID ICU unit. Um, units and he was the one that was always in charge of bringing the bodies down to the morgue and it's to the point where he had to seek um, professional help because it's just um, mm -hmm. so stressful and I think from a personal level you know I have that one patient you know that in my mind from COVID that always kind of haunts you um, you know the one that you you helped cross over um, you know that you just you felt so horrible for um, I think my nurses now more so post COVID, um, they they just seem always on edge, and every little thing triggers them. You know, mm -hmm. it'll be the smallest thing, and um, to me, the one mm -hmm. thing I always say to them is just just take a breath. You know, like breathe. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, because it, it'll you know be I'll have someone yelling at me, and I'm like the the reason why they're yelling at me is so disproportionate to what the actual issue is. This, this shouldn't be their innate reaction, but it tends to be, I think, because we all live in this level of anxiety now. Um, so I found, you know, breath work has become a huge part of, you know, being a leader and just saying, hey, let, let's take a moment. Let's just breathe and yeah. try to relax. Yeah. Kathy's uh, challenged us that we may do not only five minute experiences or meditations, whatever we want to call them, but one minute and three minute. And all of ours always begin with breath. Yeah. You'll see that in a sec. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I and I, I love that you said that because I, you know, I think that the idea, you know, of loss and of grief is, is really big. But what I'm hearing you guys talk about is pretty traumatized people. 
and the right and 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 that trauma is manifesting in wherever it can actually go so inappropriate places but places where the person feels they can you know where, where it's got to come out right mm. and i i love that you brought up breath cuz because it is so powerful that what breath can do even just taking a deep breath how that can just completely be transformative and and change um but yeah i i i hear the i i hear the trauma that you guys are talking about um really loud really loud and clear and, and i think that that's one of the things that's really motivating us because we're so aware of it that's really motivating us to move quickly mm -hmm. um on this on this vision so sorry dan please go ahead no it's perfect kathy it's you know, so another possibility when there's a negative, a so-called negative presented like death or trauma, you know, we're always going to be doing journeys and experiences that don't leave us stuck there. Let's like, so experience trauma, uh, but the transformation of right or the handling over the healing of it, etc. Kathleen, you were going to say something. Well, I just, would, just like along with Heather, was she was saying about the breath. I think the nurses are living with a, a, a very high level of anxiety almost all the time. Um, there's increased sensitivity. Um, just we're very resilient. One of the things that I think people, you know, who are nurses, we tend to be very resilient as people, but um, I worry that living at this high level of anxiety for too long is gonna take its toll. And um, I almost would like to take a journey into the breath, into the lungs, mm -hmm. you know, um, nice. and how that would, you know, because sometimes I feel like when you do a lot of breath work, the stuff that I've learned how to do, I feel like it gets like, it's like a tree and it gets sap running. <laughs> I don't know how to yeah. describe that, but that's what it feels like for me. So that's a really good point. You know, we know, I'm sure you follow it too. The science of what happens when we meditate is brilliant now compared to 10, 15 years ago. We know exactly what happens to the body in different stages of meditation and calm versus stress. And of course, oxygenation rate is critical, right? So there is actually science around that. I'll tell you what I'm feeling and see what you think, given you, and Kara, I want to give you a chance to say something too, before um, I say anything. Yeah, no, I like, I love the, it's fun to like, just like jump off of each other, like where like Lauren started with death and then like moving into the breath and everything. And one thing that always comes up like in, from yoga teacher training is that the breath is literally with you from the, you're born on until you die. And like that thought is super grounding because like everything else, every moment, every experience, anything that happens in between is momentary. And so like the fact that the breath is with you throughout is kind of like a, the string of like consistency that we don't have like in everything. So mm. it's perfect. The one thing I like about the breath is that breath work is something that nurses can do in the moment exactly right? so maybe hard to like step away or find a quiet place to meditate if i'm you know have a situation a patient's yelling at me or someone's dying or you know yeah, whatever when, and when you need it the most yeah yeah but, but breath work is something that you know i can in the moment in the patient's room in in the med room wherever i am close my eyes take a couple of deep breaths recenter myself refocus myself and kind of reconnect um, and that's what i love about uh, it. tell you what's coming to me and see what you think uh, how I'm synthesizing this in sort of little curation moment here. And, 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 and you'll see, by the way, down the road, we want to teach nurses to do what I'm about to do for nurses. Um, what, I'm, what I'm hearing and feeling is a journey to healing our bodies through breath. What do you think? I love it. Yeah. Try that. Now, yeah. as usual, the, my discipline. The one, the one thing I would say to that is it is healing healing our spirit to breath too i mean it, it's not just our bodies but i think i think we're suffering spiritually i think we're suffering emotionally yes. mm -hmm. so yeah so how would you frame it I, just, just healing ourselves through Fine. breath perfect okay so here's what we're going to do simply you're going to mute up um and you can leave your video on or off i tend to put mine off uh, it's our choice we're just going to go for a few minutes we'll see what happens and we'll come back and since we're a small group, we'll just share with one another on how we're feeling. Take a nice couple of deep breaths in your own rhythm, please. Ground yourself in your body. Put your feet on the ground. 
your backside in the chair. Take another couple of deep breaths. Just be present. Try and let your monkey mind, your to-do list in your calendar fade into the background. And come with me today on a journey towards healing ourselves through breath. Take another breath. And as you do, consider what's happening when you do. Literally, you're feeding yourself crucial oxygen. You're eliminating the carbon dioxide. Just breathe again, and as you do, imagine that somehow you're following that breath, that air coming in through your nostrils and your mouth into your lungs, filling up your lungs as they expand with that air. As they start the transfer of oxygen miraculously into the blood, And the system reverses itself for carbon dioxide. Just understand this incredible miracle of breath itself. The plant, the planetary system, every tree, every plant giving us oxygen, breathing in the scent, so to speak, of the earth herself. Literally and figuratively keeping us alive. And breathe again, and as you do, follow that oxygenated blood, follow that innervated blood system right through your body, from your lungs, right through your circulatory system, any place you want, your torso, your organs, your shoulders, your legs, your fingertips, your brain. Take a moment and feel the impact of breath on your physical being, and on your very nature, life itself being absorbed. And as you continue to take deep breaths, understand what you're breathing in, the oxygen from an entire planet, from the plant on your desk, from the forest nearby, breathing out carbon dioxide, which they need. The sharing and gifting between you and all these beings. And every moment we're doing this, and often unaware of it, and often our breath is shallow when we're tense or stressed. And just taking a deep breath, or two, or three, quietly, on our own, in a moment, at a minimum shifts our physiology, and a maximum puts us in touch with our bodies and the entire earth itself. Just take another moment and breathe, being very, very aware of all that happens for you in a state of your being, a state of your awareness, your consciousness, when you breathe intentionally, consciously. And of course, if conscious breath helps you, it can help others. With every conscious breath you take, you inspire and role model others to do the same, whether they know it or not. Sometimes when we breathe deeply, other people around us breathe a little less shallowly, a little more deeply. And of course, if a few of us are doing that, it's easier together. Imagine now, colleagues learning to breathe deeply when they most need it. You learning to do that. A little bit of peace, a little bit of relaxation, a little bit of calm that comes with that simple but profound act. Imagine your colleagues learning this. You learning it. You sharing it. Until it becomes a regular practice. And finally, with your next breath, give thanks for the ability to breathe, for the ability to know you're breathing, for the ability to take breath in with wisdom and understanding and appreciation. And when you're ready, give thanks. Come back into the room and see if you can bring a little bit of this 
taste, this feeling, this experience into the rest of your day. When you're ready, come back into the room. So now we would simply ask you for whatever comments, observations you have about how you're feeling or how you felt during the journey or the meditation. I'm happy to go first just to uh, I think get the Carol, ball rolling. I think oh, was Carol, yeah, you were just speaking up. Okay, good. Oh, go I was it. just saying I loved it. I like, you know, just like to take that moment. And like, I like the, the pace of it, the rhythm of it was like, really good I think it's it especially as like a nurse I think like we it and like in the kind of world we live in like a high-speed environment I mean for us in the ER too like when people take like long to say something you're like like I gotta I gotta go you know so yeah but like I, it was That's funny peace and you got it well and like the rhythm was just like perfectly like good I don't know I think it would be really well received how are you feeling now? Amazing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Somebody else. Don't forget to take yourselves off a of mute. You're on mute. <laughs> oh. I was definitely able to settle, you know, halfway through. Um, and I like, as a nurse, I liked, um, you know, incorporating how you incorporated some like anatomy and physiology into it. I think that's really helpful because um, as nurses, we always ask why. So it's good to have that evidence-based practice behind it. Um, and I think it'll be easier for nurses to translate that into practice if it's not some just like, you're sitting on a cloud and you're floating. And it's <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know when, when you take a deep breath, it stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system. And you're like, <laughs> you know, that's the stuff that I remember and that I then regurgitate back to my nurses when I go to then teach them, you know, like when you have a bad thought, it's neuroplasticity of the brain and you're using the same brain path and you have to you know, change your brain, you know, and then it kind of makes sense to them because it's coming mm. from a scientific point of view rather than just, yes. you know, uh, oh, that meditation stuff, like, you know. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's a really, really good point. That's Great a really point. good point because while there are nurses, you know, who are on that meditation spectrum, um, there's lots who aren't. Right. And we want to be able to connect with them as much as mm -hmm. as anybody. And so I and so that's a really, really good point. Yeah, it is. Kathy even said, and I don't have a problem with it. Let's not call it meditation. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> we might call it experiences or who knows. In fact, we can talk about that. She actually said, let's call it mental day spa. Um, well, and I, I liked your I liked um, um, Lauren talking about reflective practice. You know, that, that concept is really beautiful. I want to sit with that a little while too. Mm -hmm. It's a be beautiful concept. Lauren, Kathleen, anything you'd like to add? You're on mute, Lauren. It was Kathleen who talked about reflective practices. No worries. Uh, oh. oh, was it? Okay. But I always uh, feel so much better and heal the healer. I'm going to go back to that. Uh, you know, if I do it for myself, you know, I'm always asking other people to take the breath, but do I do it for myself? So it was a nice. That's nice. Peaceful. And I did like the reference to the lungs, to the blood. <clears throat> you know, I agree that it was a, you know, I never thought of that before. Hmm. It's that with our them. language. It's our language. So it helps mm -hmm. to better connect with nursing if you speak you know, our language, because we don't understand the mindfulness and meditation point, but we understand science. So if you can find a way to connect the two, then mm -hmm. you know, that's yeah. yeah. Um, One thing you. I like too, is that, um, you know, nurses are very practical people, quite honestly, most of us are very practical. And, um, and like Kara was saying, we tend to be itchy if we don't, if we sit and still for too long, <laughs> we've got the lady HD mm -hmm. probably too. Um, so I think that something like that, if you were, I, that, that felt very short to me. Was it five minutes? I didn't time it. Brad, was it about that? I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention time, but it felt like about five minutes to me. It, okay. yeah, it felt minutes. like a normal, yeah. It did. Okay. Yeah. Because what's interesting is that it felt very quick and, and yet I felt like it felt good. Like, I think, I think I probably would have sat and probably 
breathed along with you for longer, but that's also because it's something that I kind of do anyways. But I think that um, it went by very quickly. And yet at the end, I felt like my hands were nice and warm at the end, I, my body felt good. And, um, I, and I was thinking, yeah, I bet you with most nurses, this would be long enough to start. It's a way to get them into it. Um, and then if they decide that it was something that they would pursue on more on their own, but you were in part of the meditation, you talked about um, being with other, other, other people. And, and imagining yourself with others. And I, and I, I couldn't help but myself. I kept, I was thinking about all of you, actually, like you all kind of came to mind. And I also sort of was, you know, um, thinking about just the, the idea that of, of the unity of us as nurses, we tend to be, we're really unified as, we try to be unified as teams anyways. And I thought this would be a lovely thing to pull that team together. You know, I just sort of sent, I was sort of sensing that. And uh, so just the timeliness, I think this is where it would be very practical because it would, you know, they would be able to sit still long enough, but that was, I liked it a lot. Oh, good. Thank you. You know, to be, be fair to my original antagonist in this, he said, it has to be five minutes because I'm a busy guy and there's busy gals and guys out there. And he was right. And nobody's busier than the nurse on the ward, right? Just as nobody. So yeah, um, Brad, you you did the journey too, I can tell. Uh, I did, yeah. And, uh, I, I'm going to um, uh, kind of just go uh, to uh, adding some some nuance around Heather, what you introduced, uh, and kind of skip the sharing because I think uh, we get the idea of the sharing. Um, we do this in, our, in every meeting we we do starts with taking five minutes to just be present, get mm -hmm. out of your to do list, and and it's amazing how uh, over time you just, you find that your whole day, your whole week, your whole month, sort of being more balanced, right? You just, you know, it, and it's amazing how quickly you can drop into it with practice. But kind of on the point, uh, the Heather that you introduced, we, we uh, just finished literally two hours ago, our first 10 week uh, training program for a course series called Becoming a Journey Guide. And, you know, we're, you know, we're deep, we're, we're basically have some beta groups in different communities, different audiences. Uh, and the idea is, and Dan's the first one to say it, he said, it's not me, you know what I mean? It's just, it's about the transmission. It's about just getting outside of your ego and allowing it to be a channel for some energetic stuff that happens. It's very real that it makes you feel differently afterwards. Uh, and I think that that's measurable and we're working on, you know, sort of the science of that. But I think you're onto something, Heather. I mean, the idea being um, the knowledge that you have and the experience you have as nurses, it makes you the right guides for this kind of experience. Now, I'm not saying you specifically, but it very well could be you specifically or uh, somebody like you. And, and the point is, is um, that's kind of part of the program is that we understand it's not just Dan's voice. There's only one Dan and he's only so many places he could be in any one given uh, point in time. But uh, curating uh, the kinds of journeys and experiences that you understand in a way that nobody else can would be relevant and helpful to nurses specifically. So um, I don't know with that, and I, I know, uh, I don't know how much of your time we have, but I noticed it's 401. Uh, uh, so- Kathy, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you because yeah. you, you caused this whole trouble. Good trouble, <laughs> as John Lewis would say. Good trouble. I love that. What, love that where trouble. do you want to go from here? <laughs> well, as a, as a troublemaker here, I, yeah, my whole life, I, I can't really defend it in any way. Uh, I just want to comment on um, listening to each of you react. And I'm so grateful that there's actually different generations here represented. And I know, I know that we had talked about that, you know, in, in kind of setting this up and that you, and that each of you found value in it is really encouraging to us, you know, because I think that uh, we really want to reach a very, we want to reach nurses, you know, um, and we represent a lot of different generations and a lot of different values and a lot of different attitudes. Dan, I just want to thank you because I mean, this is Dan. I mean, like, he's not a nurse, but he went right into physiology <laughs> in his journeying. So th thank you for doing that because that was, that was an, also an important moment in this particular experience to remind us to make that connection between science, you know, and, and, these, and mindfulness and that, and not to make that feel like a leap or make that feel foreign, 
You know, it's like, oh no, now I have to learn how to meditate. You know, we don't want people to feel that way. We want them to have experiences. So this was amazing for me beyond what I had hoped for. Um, I know you guys are tired. I know you guys work. It's late back there. It's earlier it out here on the West Coast. <laughs> so what I just would like to say is that I'd really like to continue the conversation with this group if you guys are up for it. Um, and um, I'd also like to, um, uh, I'll follow up with a couple of you. I'd like to, to send some books to your ICU um, to hand out to some of your nurses who are really struggling. And, and Lauren, for some of the folks that you work for, I actually um, had an order of 100 books that got canceled. And so I've got a pile of books in my house. I don't know what to do with and now I know um, you're not sure what I'm talking about, but when, when you see it, you'll see that it's really focused on, on really supporting nurses. I will say that it's a little, it's not really science-based. It's more Gene Watson energy based, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Well, speaking but, of which, here it is right beside me. Oh yeah. It's called Nurses Cry Too. It's beautiful, um, Kathy. I loved it. I loved oh, it. Oh, thank you. I loved it. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was a real honor to work on it. Um, so I think we'll just say, I think we should leave this at, at any closing remarks you want to make. Thank you for now. I will be in touch quite shortly and we will continue this conversation um, around how we might help really um, accelerate this into reality so that nurses can be using it as quickly as possible. Anybody have any closing comments? I think um, it's an old, it was wonderful to be here. Um, nurses sometimes are closed minded, like you said, to uh, yeah. meditation or anything they're not used to. Um, but through experience, I know you can crack that nut with the toughest of the nuts just from them being around you or doing, making them encouraging them not making them but mm -hmm. you know the nursing coming out right we make people do <laughs> this. <laughs> you will do this <laughs> uh, any I'm other sorry. any other comments just to tag on what lauren's saying too i think that there is a certain readiness right now i think people are recognizing that um it's been a very difficult 12 months and a lot of people have been seeking employee assistance programs for counseling or therapy yeah. Um, there is a, a higher level of readiness than I think we would have had last year, for example. Yes. So yes. again, like Kathy, you talked about the timing is kind of impeccable. Um, mm. And so you might have people much more open and prepared, ready for it than you think. I call um, this being divinely led. Yes. I'm, yeah, I'm I feel the Lauren. same way you do, Lauren. I feel it. Mm. And I feel it's divinely led that we're all here right now doing this. I, mean, I was so excited, you know, just thinking of this in the days leading up to it. And my mind was racing on, you know, how we could use this. And going back to like the nurse educator in me, I thought it would be great, you know, once it was established that we even go to, um, you know, nursing schools and, oh, yeah. you know, progress of new grad nurses and how mm -hmm. they prepare better in the work environment when they're given the tools early on rather than being thrust into the work environment unprepared and then having to kind of backtrack, you know, really post good. You know, Brad, just before we go, can you pull up the image of the nurses app? Because I think people will enjoy uh, that. Yeah, like you know, give me a second. I, I didn't have it over, but it'd take me about 15 seconds to find that. Hold on one yeah, second. Yeah, and this is something that um, Kathy and, and one of her colleagues helped create as a beginning kind of what would it look like? What would it feel like? And I think it's quite exciting. And Kathy, we completely imitated it for the vets. It's the oh, same good. idea. Yeah, only with vet pictures, right, of course. <laughs> we care and love about them too. While he's pulling that up, Cara, did you want to say anything? Uh, no, it's just like, I love like this whole thing that we're even like talking about it. Like Kathleen said, like, I definitely believe we are at a state of readiness. I was just talking to like the director of my holistic program that we're in this like age of enlightenment in like the modern world you know like it's it always comes after something really tragic which is obviously COVID um but being able to like see it like applied and seeing like yeah just this like global like awakening in a way to mm -hmm. possibilities and like the internal like we have everything within um and then it'll come without so yeah I well love said it. Kara Brad just pull up the pictures 
So, uh, yeah. well, actually the first picture, no, could you go back, back up? Yeah, sure, Ken. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the first picture, so, so this is the concept of the home screen um, for the app. Um, and um, um, these ideas of, you know, um, um, of just, I need to just be with me for a minute, right? I need to perform some self care or I need to connect with others. And so from there you would navigate in and then you can see inside, we tried to make it just really gentle visually. And then um, inside here, you can see um, some of these concepts here on the first um, image is really just around, you know, your personal moments. I have one minute free or I have three minutes free. And, and then you can kind of choose your path. I need some joy in my life. I need to recharge. I need to process, I need, whatever. Right, these are just ideas. And then you would go into a, a, a moment of that. And then the, the far right screen is, is, is a screen for like what we just did together. Yeah. So if you're going to do, a, if you have time to do a group and you wanna do a five minute you know, talk um, uh, journey and then have a conversation, then um, you could do that as well. Great. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. And thank you so much, all of you. I'm, I'm looking forward to your wisdom and your input as we uh, go the next steps. Thank you. It was really we'll a pleasure be in touch to meet all of you. Soon. Thank yeah. you all so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> be Bye -bye. well. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, Catherine.